Okay, so let's take a look at question six here in uh, unit seven. Um, what we've got here is a data table and we're asked to look at and analyze this information and try to figure out um, what is the smallest standard deviation and what is the largest standard deviation and to just give a reason. So we're not really asked to calculate this question. So we're, we need to kind of analyze the data set ourselves to see what we have. So the first thing we see is we've got five sets of values here. Um, some of the data sets are larger than others, um, but we can, take a st we can start to look at these in, in a particular way. So the first thing you need to remember um, what standard deviation is looking at is we are looking at a way to measure um, what's called variance um, of data. So how it is how close numbers are together or how far apart numbers are. And standard deviation is a property that determines that, right? We can, there is, we have a specific formula of how we treat the data, but sometimes we just need to get a feel for what this data is. So what I'm gonna do here is on the very end of the column here, we're just gonna put a column here called difference. Um, and we're just gonna look at what some of the differences are. So the way I would look at this, this set of data is let's find the largest difference between, so the, the largest value and the smallest value. So for set one, the difference here is 10. Um, we had our lowest value is two, our largest one is 12. For set three, um, it looks like our difference here is seven and one extra is eight, 21 minus 13. Um, for this one, our set of different, uh, our differences here is um, between 44 and 64, so that's 20. Set four, our differences are zero, and set five, our differences here are six. So right off the bat, this should tell us something about the, this information. Now again, it's not completely accurate because we don't do a complete calculation on it. And if you look at it, the numbers are sort of evenly distributed. Um, there's an equal number of low numbers and an equal number of high numbers. But in this case, we can kind of get a little bit of a feel about what's going on here. So remember, we're looking for variance. So how does the deviation is going to, um, going to be large or small? So the first question we're asked here is, which set has the smallest standard deviation? So the smallest standard deviation would be where the set of data has the smallest difference. So this would be set four because the difference in all the data points is zero. Okay, so there is not much variance. In fact, there is no variance of the data. That means that all the data is clustered very tightly together. And um, if we had to measure the standard deviation for that, it would, we would find that we really wouldn't have one. Um, because there is no variance in any of the points. So, so set four would have the smallest amount. We could have an extra point in there, maybe we'd have like a 51 or a 45, but the majority of the data points are all centered around 50, okay? So that's how we interpret the smallest standard deviation. So then the largest standard deviation would just be the opposite. It would be the data that has the largest set of differences or the largest dispersal in the variance, um, and that would be set three, okay, because the difference is, um, in this case, 20, all right? So the thing that we're looking for is that's how we could get a feel for what the magnitude of the standard deviation would be just by the differences um, in the data. Now, again, you do have to be a little bit careful with this because um, there is a correct formula for, for, for calculating this. And this really only kind of works because we have an even number of low points and high points. So they tend to kind of cancel each other out. Um, otherwise, the, the variance um, calculation um, could be different. Um, the data could be, um, what, what looks like a close cluster of data could be actually quite dispersed or what looks like a really dispersed um, cluster of data could actually be quite close unless we do the true calculation. But in this case, for this particular set, um, that would be an easy way to interpret it.